What's going on everybody? This is episode 25 and we are going to be talking about reading and writing to files. I actually really like this in C++. It's quite easy. If you already know how to work with writing and reading from the console, moving to a file is very similar. This video is sponsored by Visual Assist, which is a plugin for Visual Studio, enhancing the C++, C, and C Sharp development experience. So if you've been following along with the series but using Visual Studio, I definitely recommend Visual Assist, which should overall make the development experience better. So if you want to support this channel, I'll drop a link to a free trial down below. So here is our code. I deleted a lot of stuff from the previous video. So now we just have a main function that is empty and we have two print functions to print collections that we might end up using later. I removed everything else. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to include F stream and F I believe is short for file. And you probably want to include it, not include it. So we will fix that real quick. And let's go ahead and ask the user a question and then read their information from the console. We will take what they wrote to the console and write it to a file. So see out, what did you eat today? Or no, let's just go, what did you eat? Let's say this is some kind of tracker. We want to keep track of calories or just diet and the item is going to be inputted from console in, like so. The way you write to a file is you're going to say OF stream file passing in a value, specifically a string for the name of the file. So we could say foods.txt or whatever you want this to be. And then afterwards, you're going to say file.close. Now this doesn't actually write the item to the file. I don't really like that word. Let's go ahead and change it to food. So we have a string food. And what we will do is we will say file, which is our object here we created, and output the food item to that file. So it's pretty much just like outputting to the console, but instead of using C out, you're going to use that file object. So let's run this. What did you eat? Lemons and press any key to continue. Okay, so what happened exactly? Where did this file go? If we open up our projects, I accidentally closed it, so I'm just gonna bring that back here and drag this over to the right. You can see right here, inside of the target platforms, which generally I like to switch this to 64-bit, and I'll go ahead and run this again, lemons. Now when we go into our project, we can right-click, show in Explorer, that's going to bring up the folder structure. And inside of Windows 64, debug, we now have this foods text document. Opening that up, you can see the value lemons. So that is where the actual file is. So if you want it to show up over here, you can do that. You can say right click, add, and then you can actually go into that folder and grab any file grabbing the text document, hit open. You can see Windows 64 debug foods.txt. So that's how we can regularly reference that file. Now, if we wanted to read this value from the file, let's go ahead and figure out how to do that. Instead of creating an OF stream, we're going to change this to IF stream. So instead of output, it's going to be input. We will no longer need to get the value from the user. Instead, down here, we will say string food and then Flip these arrows around into food. So coming from the file into food, similar to how we read from CN, and then we could actually see out you ate food. Hit run, and you can see you ate lemons. Awesome. So you can see that reading and writing to the file is working. Now let's talk about writing and reading multiple items. We will remove this code since we're going to go back to what we had, but it's going to be a little bit different. So we'll have an OF stream foods.txt. Instead of asking the user for multiple foods, let's just go ahead and define a deck real quick of type string foods, and this will be initialized with a few values. So lemons, cheesecake, and salmon. We can loop through these. So after we've opened the file, we'll say four, and inside of here, every single item in here, which is a type string, food, which comes from foods, 
we will output this just like to C out, but instead it's going to be to the file. So file, food, and line, and then file.close. So let's run this real quick. Nothing shows up, which is expected. Uh, it's freaking out because the text file has been changed, yes to all. Uh, Foods.txt now has those three values. So far, so good. Now let's talk about how we can read those values. So we will remove this code here. And for the deck, what I'll do is just have it start being empty and we'll actually add data to it. So we can remove all of this, replace it with a semicolon, create an input file stream. And here's a little trick. You can read from the file into a food variable, which we will define. And you can do this inside of the loop. It'll evaluate to true as long as there's some as long as there's some information to be retrieved. So it'll continue to do this until the file has been read all the way through. Inside of here, we can just say foods dot push back, passing in the food. Finally, since we created that nice handy dandy print function, we can just say print foods and confirm that we get all of these values in the terminal. Running this, and you can see it was able to successfully read each of those foods. So those are the different variations of reading and writing to files that I wanted to talk about. That's all I got in this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Stay tuned. I'll see you in the next video.